Welcome to a series of trainings as part of the Erasmus Plus project, Digital and Environmental Citizenship. This series Omicron F trainings is called Online Academy for Social Impact and it mostly has to do with digital citizenship. This first session, presented by ITML, has two parts. The first one refers to access and inclusion online and the second one is about learning and creativity. Let me introduce our trainers to you. The first one is Ms. Yanakopola Maria Eleni, who is a project management assistant on this project. She has studied business management and is now an HR assistant at ITML. The second one is Ms. Anastasia Dora, who is now a UI slash UX designer at ITML. She holds her diploma in architectural engineering and is now completing her master's degree in advanced informatics and computing systems, intelligent technologies for HCI at the University of Piraeus. What does access online mean though? In the past the internet was mainly used for professional and academic reasons. Most people didn't even have internet access in their house. Nowadays, mostly teenagers and young adults have taken over the internet through social media, such as Instagram and TikTok. Online access is essential for everyone though, as many important procedures have moved from face-to-face -to, -face to online. If someone wants to be an active citizen, then they need to have online presence. In order for your online presence to be safe and constructive, there are several skills you need to focus on. First, it's the information or data literacy. It's all about being able to filter all the information you receive online and tell what is trustworthy and what is not. Secondly, the communication and collaboration have to do with sharing, chatting and collaborating via ICT. Also, with identity management and mail etiquette. One that is very popular in the job market is digital content creation by using various tools and programming. It also requires integration and copywriting. Another skill which is useful is safety online. Along with the extended use of the internet from everyone, there are many people who are trying to scam others. It's very important being able to identify and avoid such cases. Lastly, problem-solving skills are needed both from tech experts, but also from everyday users. For some of those skills, we will expand more in the next sessions. Practicing all these skills has only one goal, reaching the digital literacy, or at least what we consider digital literacy right now. But now, let's talk about everyone's online presence. Let's assume that you are quite active online. When you're active, especially on social media, you have a profile which is called your online persona. Many people, especially young ones, share everything online. So, if it's not online, did it really happen? Our online persona consists of the content that we choose to share with our online friends. It has happened many times that the online persona is much different than the actual person that we are or we know. It sounds weird or maybe even terrifying talking about people having multiple personalities. But it is actually quite true. A great example of such cases is the influencers you see online. Most of the times, they are completely different people in their everyday life. I think you will agree with me that based on the means that we use in order to share a message, the message is different, it is shared in a different crowd and maybe there are even different conclusions that appear. It is not fakeness then, it is just adaptation. A big part of our everyday life consists of online platforms. Some people are quite active, some are not, but let's say that this online persona is definitely part of ourselves now. McLuhan proposes that a communication medium itself, not the messages it carries, should be the primary focus of study. He showed that artifacts such as media affect any society by their characteristics, or content. Depending on the means that we use, the message we are trying to share is different. Take a minute to think, imagine you want to share a message with your local community. It might be any kind of message. How different would it be if you chose to share it via a video, via text, via audio or via an image? To explain the importance and the size of online inclusion, I will use the example of Masa Amini. This woman was beaten to death by the Iranian police because she would not cover her head with the hijab. This kind of news was spread all over the world in no time. Police brutality is not something new. This and other similar cases of police brutality, femicide, femicide is the ultimate form of violence against women and girls, etc., is not something new. We just now have the means to learn about it and also act. Because we also act through digital platforms. Going back to Masa Amini, it does not seem weird anymore that the Iranian government reacted with a total internet shutdown. 
As a conclusion, with the use of the internet as the main source of information, any active citizen online can feel included in things happening all over the world. Let's move further than the inclusivity online. Our online presence and digital world does not only mean inclusion, but it could also lead to exclusion. What do you know about cyberbullying? Cyberbullying can be seen as messages through which the bully tries to insult or terrify the victim. It can also be the leak online of some personal data. These are the most common ones. The digital divide is a term that refers to the gap between demographics and regions that have access to modern information and communications technology, ICT, and those that don't or have restricted access. This technology can include the telephone, television, personal computers and internet connectivity. Digital exclusion is where a section of the population have continuing unequal access and capacity to use information and communications technologies, ICT, that are essential to fully participate in society. Let's move on to the second part of the session, which is learning and creativity. What does learning online refer to? In the digital world we have many different ways to learn, and at the same time to teach. You can still learn with the traditional way, by reading something, as if you would do if you had a book. You can also watch a video on YouTube. The past few years you can also listen to audiobooks or podcasts. The videos that you watch are not an hour long, they might be some seconds long. This is a form of inclusion because anyone can search and learn for anything. You can even get a certificate of a skill or even a full master's degree. But another great thing for me is that you can also teach without having to be some kind of professor. You can share with the world some skill that you have teach them and share knowledge with other people who are interested in the same topic. Imagine, for example, that you are quite interested in the climate change and air pollution. You can learn a lot of things about it, how does it get worse, how could each one of us save the planet. Then you can discuss with other people who are interested and at some point you will have gathered much information to share with the world in any way you want. It will not make a big of a difference but if you influence at least one person it's already enough. And as I work in the HR sector, I chose two examples of what learning online and building a new skill could mean. There's one in Spanish and one in Greek, based on the profiles of our participants. ¿Qué tal, Javi? Bien. ¿Dónde te ves en cinco años? Uf, pues eh, no lo sé. Espero que, que vivo o que me haya tocado al menos la, la lotería o trabajando con vosotros. En una pues dentro de cinco años me veo trabajando en una empresa de mi sector, pudiendo compartir todo mi, mi conocimiento y experiencias de, de todas mis etapas anteriores. ¿Qué no te gusta de tu empresa actual? ¿Qué no me gusta? Uf, pues mis compañeros. Mis compañeros son muy aburridos. Alejandro me cae fatal y encima estoy rodeado de todo Virgo. Aunque estoy muy agradecido en la empresa actual, me han dado muchas oportunidades, la verdad que me siento estancado. Creo que es el momento para dar el siguiente salto en mi carrera profesional. Πρέπει να αποφύγει το βιογραφικό σου. Νούμερο 1. Τη φωτογραφία σου. Δεν είναι απαραίτητο να έχει φωτογραφία στο βιογραφικό σου. Αν παρόλα αυτά επιλέξει μία, φρόντισε να μην είναι τύπου selfie. Αλλά μία πρόσφατη και επαγγελματική φωτογραφία με καλό φωτισμό που θα φαίνεται το πρόσωπό σου καθαρά. 2. Τα στοιχεία επικοινωνία σου. Φρόντισε να συμπεριλάβει τα πιο πρόσφατα. 3. Συντακτικά και ορθογραφικά λάθη. Σιγουρέψου πω δεν έχει κάποιο από αυτά και το μέγεθο του βιογραφικού σου δεν ξεπερνά τη μία με δύο σελίδε. 4. Τη χρονολογική σειρά. Ξεκίνα με την πιο πρόσφατη εργασιακή σου εμπειρία και συνέχισε με τι παλιότερε. 5. Η προπηρεσία σου. Φρόντισε να είναι άμεσα συσχετιζόμενη με τη θέση για την οποία ετήσει. Έχει στρατήγη για να κάνει πιο ελκυστικό το βιογραφικό σου ή αριθμοί. Φρόντισε να συμπεριλάβει κάποιου ω απόδειξη όσων έχει καταφέρει. Through many different online platforms, we can learn more about different topics, in different ways, and even develop a new skill. The first requirement, of course, is the willingness to learn. Then, you have to decide which form would be the best in order to learn something. It can be a video, a podcast, an audio book, or whatever. You should always be critical on the information you see online. Make sure you have found an accurate source. If all these steps are done correctly, then you will most probably learn something new. As Albert Einstein said, creativity is just intelligence having fun. As our participants agreed, creativity is what we call thinking outside of the box. Regarding that phrase, you will find a very interesting TEDx talk in the description. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this session. For any questions, you can contact us anytime in the mail you see on your screen.